Live from Paradise Studios in Massapequa, New York, it's Unger the Radar, starring Randy Unger. Brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Tonight, Randy will be interviewing actress, writer, Karat Ann Kedwani, and producer, Philip Giambri. Randy will also be reviewing the new films, First Man, and After Everything, and will discuss New York Comic Con with special guest critics, Robin Channing, Jennifer Covey, and Joseph Amendolia. And now, here's your host, Randy Unger. Hey guys, I'm Randy Unger, and this is another edition of Unger the Radar, a very special, jam-packed edition of Unger the Radar. And with me right now, I have actress and writer Karat and Kadwani. Hello. Hi. And uh, producer, Mr. Philip Giambri. Hey guys, how's it going today? Good, good. Good. Thanks for being here today. It's great. Absolutely. <laughs> Happy to be here. Yeah. So usually we talk mostly film, um, but today it's very special because you are a stage actress as well. And you guys are promoting um, this uh, Broadway, off-Broadway show, rather, uh, called Intrusion. Also, um, my name is, they call me Q. That's right. They call me Q. <laughs> so tell everyone a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm an actress from New York City, and I do a lot of theater, TV, film, web series, corporate videos. But I'm really proud of my solo plays that I've written and which I perform all over the country at colleges, mm -hmm. both of which have been off-Broadway as well. Nice. Intrusion was off-Broadway the summer of 2018, this mm -hmm. year. Um, and I'm really excited that I get to perf keep performing it all mm -hmm. over the country and provide sexual violence prevention programming to right. students everywhere. Very heavy topic. <laughs> Very heavy. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little about your involvement. Like, wh what is it about the Me Too movement that's, that has impacted your work so, so much? Absolutely. You know, I started writing it three years ago mm -hmm. and I actually showed Philip the early draft. He gave me some excellent feedback and last year I decided to rewrite it. I decided I wanted to start performing it this year before we saw the resurgence of the Me Too movement, mm. before the Weinstein case broke. And everybody was saying, why are you writing this show? Yeah. And I thought, because it's a big problem globally. Rape culture exists. Why are you writing this show? It's so important. Yes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it became a very big deal. It became daily headline news mm -hmm. and we saw how important it is to get this conversation going um, especially because it affects so many people in every sector of our society yeah. we especially see it on college campuses all the way up the, the ladder to politics yeah. but what's your what's been your involvement uh, with the performances we met a long time ago and we respected each other's work and she's one of the hardest working people in the Aww. profession that I know <laughs> she sent me a copy of the script and I read it and I thought it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, I made some comments. I sent them back to her, and she thanked me for my honesty. Mm -hmm. And then she said about to totally rewrite the show. Mm -hmm. And two years later, it just pops out at the most opportune time in history for women in this kind of involvement with mo the movement of Me Too. And the play is so topical. And mm -hmm. the thing that I like about it the most is it, uh, it answers the questions that people haven't had answered by the things they see on TV. That's yeah. the best part. And yeah, the, the timing couldn't be better for this. I mean, you know, that's how things work, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, like I said, I was always going to be performing it this year. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really important and it's, it's exceptional that this is coming to the forefront, especially with the Me Too movement and Time's <clears throat> Up movement that we see, which allows survivors of sexual violence to feel safe, to mm -hmm. feel that they don't need to feel ashamed anymore, that there's uh, that they can feel brave enough, that they will have the support. And um, there are lots of people out there, lots of organizations and individuals. In fact, I include a lot of statistics and quotes and facts in my show. Mm. I play eight characters in an hour. That's uh, awesome. Just so that we can understand how, it re how many people are really affected. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I, I added a line recently. And it oh. says, 760 million women, 56 million men have been raped. <laughs> We always hear numbers like one out of five or one out of 75. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but that's how many people have been raped. Oh my God. And so we start to understand why the Me Too movement, why this conversation is becoming a, an everyday conversation, yeah. because it's time to stop it. And the numbers keep growing and growing, so it's really important. And we're hoping yeah. that if, if more people come forward, which is really the, the biggest message of intrusion, is to, is to mm -hmm. give survivors a voice and to also 
motivate people who support uh, the movement to yeah. say, keep going. Change right. takes time. We're hoping that once people come forward, we can then really start to see true change and right. really start to do away with all these people who are predators. So what, is, what do you think is the relationship between art and really social movements like this? Like, there, there's, what's the connection? Do you think art can really change society? You know, Plato has a quote. He, yeah. he said, those who tell the stories rule the world. Mm. And I really believe that. Okay. I've always been motivated by political theater, theater that can truly make a social change, get mm -hmm. audience to see themselves yeah. in the work that they're seeing on stage. And I think that's the beauty of art, the, mm -hmm. the ability of art to change people's minds and to say, how am I truly connected to this issue? Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, when I perform it at colleges, I'm always amazed and impressed by how the students are connected to my characters. Mm -hmm. They love there are certain characters that they love. Okay. So I play a male day trader, okay. and um, the, the character starts off really fun and <laughs> dancing, and he's at a bar drinking, and they, they're laughing along, they're, they're relating to the character, and then all of a sudden, halfway through the monologue, <laughs> the character reveals, he confesses, uh -huh. that he was a victim of sexual oh, assault. Wow. The so last person you'd expect. To the last write. person you'd expect, <laughs> but in a really important story to tell. Sure. They also love the journalist character I play, hmm. who represents how the, how media should address and approach this issue by really trying to focus on the truth yeah. and and supporting people who come forward instead of making judgments ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I also play a politician character mm -hmm. who is liberal, okay. who wants to help, but it's election year, so uh. he can't. Oh, move funds tricky. into helping the <laughs> situation, which is what we see in our society today. Mm. So I like to, I try to help students and audiences see things. I try to focus the issue for them so they can see how all of these different sectors come together okay. and why it is that we haven't done anything yet. That's great. Well, I hope this show does really well. I hope it opens up everyone's eyes to this. Um, what? Tell me a little bit about your your past work. Your I know you're a film and TV actress as well. I am. I'm lucky to have been on a bunch of TV shows as sure. well. Um, I'll be playing a role on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt the new season. Oh, cool. So I'm excited about <laughs> that. And um, I do a lot of, I just went to a screening of a web series I was on. I played a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to play a lot of, a variety of different roles, and yeah. I'm excited about that. I used to tour, well, I currently tour my other solo play, They Call Me Q, which was also off-Broadway. Philip has seen that four times now. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Big supporter. Keeps getting better and better, I'm sure. <laughs> the thing with uh, theater is like I, I, I started my training in theater back in the 60s, mm -hmm. and theater was a lot more serious then. Now I get the feeling theater is about music. You know, they bring in busloads of blue-haired ladies who only <laughs> want to be entertained with uh, musicals and dancing. And theater to me was an experience, an emotional experience, an intellectual experience, and a learning experience. Yeah. Clifford Odets, Arthur Miller, they, they set a pattern, and uh, it kind of was disappearing, and I latched onto her because she, she knows that. She feels it. Okay. That's nice. <laughs> and yeah, that's awesome. And I, I read something about you on the New York Times, you're known as the Ancient Mariner. That's correct. W what is that? What's the history behind that? Well, I uh, I perform uh, stories from my book. I've been performing for ten or fifteen years. I tell stories. Uh, I re write poetry, read poetry, and uh, mm -hmm. people on open mic particularly would constantly mispronounce my name, uh, <laughs> which is Giambri. I don't know that it's that difficult. Right. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so then they took to calling me the old guy. Let's bring on the old guy. <laughs> oh, oh. That didn't sit well with me, no, so I no. thought, let's have a more literate version of the old guy. Right. And the Ancient Mariner uh, has literary references, and everyone remembers it. So yeah. I've become a lot more popular with that name than my real name. So that's who I am and now. And the Mariner refers to your time in the Naval Service. Right. I okay. served in the uh, Navy Submarine Service. That's awesome. And uh, it allows me to be different than myself with that stage persona, too. So oh. What's amazing is that he, Philip also has an open mic. Uh -huh. And... I went to the open mic and I would test out monologues from my show there. Oh, cool. So it really That's gave me a great opportunity to just be material. very casual yeah. about it and something that I'd worked on the night before. I'd, hmm. I'd, you know, there was no pressure on me. I'd go and mm -hmm. I'd just read the monologue and see how the how the others there would react to it. That's so it was really really great. It's <laughs> cool. So what, 
Um, I, I actually want to go to this open mic now. <laughs> is this, this is in Manhattan? Well, I hosted a show for five years. It started March of uh, 2013, hmm. and uh, I closed three bars. We <laughs> the show ran, ran in bars, and the last show closed in uh, March of 2018. Oh, wow. So uh, we're currently searching for a new venue, okay. and I have some uh, physical issues that I'm facing. So I'm hoping to be starting again in January. Okay. But generally, we have three feature performers, like you or people who are regulars on the show, and and then we have 15 or 20 open mic spots where people polish their craft. That's mm -hmm. what it's about. It's That's about right. learning how to, where the microphone is, where the light is, uh, how to entertain people rather than just get up and read in a boring kind of mm -hmm. voice that they taught you in academia. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it was so wonderful to have Philip as the associate producer mm -hmm. for Intrusion Off-Broadway because he's been such a supportive force in my life from reading the draft to inviting me to perform anything that I'm working on mm -hmm. at the open mics to you know, even, you know, I bought his book that he has because I wanted to <laughs> learn from from it. And yeah. I wanted to, I would read it while I was on flights going to shows nice. at colleges because I wanted to get inspired. And I think that that's what's really important in yeah. art, too, to, you know, it's not always about your work. It's about being inspired by others' work mm. and, and seeing. It's a community. For it's sure. a community. Yeah, yeah. And also to reiterate the message of art that, which I always try to remind myself, which is there are no rules. Mm -hmm. You can create whatever you want because your voice is important. Awesome. Your story is important, and people want to hear that story. Yes. Right. Right. So after Intrusion, do you guys plan on working together again? I hope so. Whenever we can. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all in. Anytime she has anything new, she wants to try out at my show. The door is always open. I always want to hear it. Anytime she invites me to help her with anything, I'm in. You're a dynamic duo. This is awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Do you see Intrusion turning into maybe a, a, a miniseries or a film? I, I get asked that a lot, and I would love for that to happen. I've been thinking about how that could work if I would play all the different characters or yeah. if I would, you know, you don't often see that, <laughs> um, or, if, or if it would be a multi-character uh, mm -hmm script in that way. Hmm. Um, my other show, They Call Me Q, everybody's always asking me to do that because it's about culture and identity and it's mm. based about my life being born in Bombay but growing up in the Bronx, New York. <laughs> so I play 13 characters in one hour on nice. that show. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really amazing to be able to play different characters because I think then the audience gets to see different perspectives and it's right. on the same issue. It really stretches you as an actor. Absolutely, sure. and I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, awesome. You know, I love when I get to that point and where I am now, which is I don't have to think about the lines. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really about my character moment to moment. you wrote it all, yeah. I did write That's it awesome. all. Yeah. So <laughs> now when I'm on stage, when I'm performing, true magic happens, mm -hmm. which is I find myself, even though, you know, I'm the character and I'm talking to somebody else, I see that other person that I'm talking to. I mm. see them. It's bizarre out-of-body experience. Yeah. <laughs> and awesome. because I'm so moment-to-moment -moment present in the scene, because I'm not thinking about anything except for what the character wants and mm -hmm. what their obstacle is. So cool. it's, it's an amazing experience when you can get to that level. Cool. And her characters are so vividly drawn. Mm -hmm. I, I've had the luxury of seeing characters that are no longer in that play huh. and when she was experimenting on open mic and I fell in love with the characters and when she, they were cut because of time restrictions. I, no, you can't cut that person. <laughs> I, fell, I fell in love with that girl. You're <laughs> hell, yeah, you're yeah. woman. I did, a, I did a, a piece on an open mic that was called uh, Monologues Uncut. Mm -hmm. So for They Call Me Q, I had 13 characters, but two characters didn't make it to the oh. final. So, <laughs> But I had them saved, and I loved them. I and saved they were their great draft. Huh. So I thought, wow, what a great opportunity for me to, to just perform those characters yeah. because they didn't make it to the final. And, oh. uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was great fun. Yeah. I'm sure you can maybe, maybe bring them back in the future. <laughs> we'll maybe, see. Maybe. Maybe so, it'll be in the, the film version. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Philip, do you have some acting experience? or? I, um, yeah, yes, I went to acting school uh, when I got out of the military, and I studied with Stella Adler in New York. I uh, worked in the theater for about 10 years, stage managing, touring, summer stock. Uh, mm. I did movie parts. I was in both unions, Actors Equity and Screen Actors Guild, and I was... Not good enough looking when they were only hiring Robert Redford types. Oh, no. Everyone said, hang around, you're a character actor. You get a lot of work in 15 years. Yeah. And, um, my wife said, don't you think maybe you should have a wristwatch and shoes like other people, you know? <laughs> get, a, get a job and have, make money. So. And the people at home can't see you have a bunch of tattoos, right? Yes, yeah. I have 26 tattoos. Nice. And I got my first one at 70 years old. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Why, why, why did it take you so long? 
Uh, I didn't like tattoos okay. uh, in submarine service. When you go to boot camp, everybody gets a Navy tattoo. You go in submarines, everybody gets a submarine insignia get tattoo. Mm. I always thought they were kind of gaudy. Okay. Uh, um, and then when I started performing, uh, I was having no one considered me a poet. No one considered me a storyteller. I was kind of like a freak. So I oh. said, well, if I, no one's going to publish me. I'll publish myself. So I started getting yeah. all of my stories. As I wrote a new story, I got a tattoo of that oh, story. That's awesome. I wish it was. I wish it was warmer outside. <laughs> you could show them off. I've, I've taken my shirt off it too. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. But I, the collaborator, the lady who does all my tattoos, is doing artwork for my next two books. So oh, awesome! You get a chance to see it. I'll look forward yeah. to that. That's she cool. does beautiful Very work. Cool. Linda cool. Walken. Nice, nice. And speaking of plugs, guys, we we're about out of time for this segment. But plug away. What do you have uh, on the horizon? What's coming up? Sure. Well, I'm still touring Intrusion, and you can find and see the trailer and pictures, the fully loaded website, intrusionshow.com. I'm also touring They Call Me Q, that's theycallmeqshow.com. And I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, so I post all my uh, upcoming gigs and events on my Facebook page, which is Q Kedwani. Awesome. And for those who, you know, if you can't spell that, it's, <laughs> you, you can, you know, see it on my, on my Facebook page. It's, uh, it's all up there, guys. <laughs> Philip, anything uh, you want to promote? I have a book called uh, Confessions of a Repeat Offender. <laughs> okay. uh, it uh, came out in 2016. It's available on Amazon Online or Barnes & Noble. I have two other books in the works right now that I'm waiting for the illustrations to be done for them. Okay. But they're already written. And I perform all around town all the time. I'm like... Uh, downtown guy. Uh, I like open mic because I try all my new material. Nice. I meet friends like you, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm retired. I have I'm having fun. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna see you when those open mic nights yeah, <laughs> for sure. Great. Let cool. me know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a reunion. Yeah. <laughs> Thank we you. We have a nice family. Yeah, I love it. I, I get a, a really good vibe here. So. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I Rhymes thank of the Ancient Mariners, what the show is called. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time thank today. You. This has been great.